Look at these, man. These things are just pulled in completely. It's June 22nd, 2020, so these haven't been changed since January. That's crazy. And these ones are actually sucking in. All right, I want to start this video off and just say that we have large, extra large hats in stock again. A lot of people have been waiting. Just a little information about the hats. These hats are black flex fit. They have a black underbrim. They do not have my logo on them purposely. They just say HVACR, just kind of has my color scheme on it, okay? I did that because I wanted you guys to be able to wear these hats to work and not necessarily represent my brand while you're at your own work. Um, I have my own company and I don't want my guys wearing someone else's brand. You know, I don't want someone to think this is another service company or something like that, okay? So I purposely did that so that way you guys can wear them and just, you know, they, they're informational, they say HVACR. Um, again, they're like a breathable flex fit material. You can actually see through them. I can't really show you this, but I can see the light through these things. They, they work really good. Um, they last quite a while. So again, they're available on the website right now. The, the large extra larges, there's a lot of them. I think there's 99 available. Uh, the small mediums, there's just a couple of them. Um, but yeah, that's it. We're going to get on with the video now. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. This is a Saturday morning call. They called me last night saying they had water leaks coming from multiple ACs. I can already tell you what's going on. I've done a lot of cleaning already at these restaurants, so... We're gonna have dirty filters, broken belts. They said the bar was the biggest issue. I'll have to figure out which one is actually the problem, but I just have a feeling we're gonna have to be cleaning pretty much every AC up here. So no obvious signs yet. So we're gonna open up the returns and see what it looks like inside. Definitely some airflow issues considering the filters haven't been changed since January 22nd. That's gonna be nice. And then we'll have to open them up and see. I can hear belts loose on this one. Drain is clear. On this one, this is their bigger bar, but the coil is hammered. It may not look horrendous, but it is jammed in there, the stuff. And this is always like you get this big buildup where the filter creases are, where the filters meet. You know, right here, you usually get big buildups. But let's go look at the other bar AC and see if the drain's plugged up on that one. All right, this is the smaller one. And this is interesting because the drain is not plugged up on this one either. So it makes me wonder where this water leaked. They said it was leaking on the customers. Interesting, interesting. This is another one of their ACs that's nowhere near the bar, but these ones, look at these, man. These things are just pulled in completely. It's June 22nd, 2020. So these haven't been changed since January. That's crazy. And these ones are actually sucking in because they're plugged. Imagine we're having some airflow issues on this one. Look at this one. This one is uh, full of water. The drain is plugged down there. I don't know if this is the one they were talking about, but damn. They said the bar. This is nowhere near their bar. These P-traps all need to be redone. Let's power it down. As far as the bar ACs go, I'm gonna start on those two because those were the main ones that were supposedly leaking. But I don't have plugged up drains on either two of the bar ACs, this one or that one. The filters were dirty. Um, so we're gonna start just by checking the units out. And maybe it's not something as simple as a plugged up drain. Maybe the coil was icing up. Maybe we have a restriction in the metering device causing you know weird frost patterns, who knows? Uh, I've also seen where the, the first stage compressor is not working and the second stage is. The second stage is above the first stage, so the water drips when it condensates and then gets pulled off the coil. There's all kinds of weird things. Um, so we're gonna start with the belts and then work our way there. Surprisingly, this belt's not that bad. They must have had these units shut down during COVID and not running normal schedules because, I mean, there's light wear, but this is, the last PM, I don't know if we changed the belts on the last PM or not, but I would assume we did. But yeah, those don't look bad at all. Nice and snug too. Huh, interesting. The smaller bar AC's belt is looking good too. I mean, slight wear to it, but not enough to change it. Nice and snug, and we got a spare. So they must have had these units shut off if they did what they were supposed to do. I think there was a corporate mandate that they shut off their AC's. 
during the whole thing because yeah these things are looking good um huh interesting so i still don't know where this water's coming from i'm gonna have to open up the ducts and look and see if i can see traces of water in them this is the one the smaller bar if we get down in here and you look back into there that's all water right here it's all wet and then you can look over here and this is all wet right here too yeah so the water was coming from here but the drains not plugged up what well, could be we need to look and see if that trap is dry if the trap is dry that could be it so we're gonna open that trap up. I can't stand all that stupid tape, but yeah, let's open that trap up and see if it's dry. Judging by just taking the tape off and the water dripping out of it, I don't think the trap is dry. Oh, yeah, that's dry. That's a dry trap for sure. But no, that doesn't make sense though. It still shouldn't be dry like that, but the fact that there's no water in the drain pan right now when the unit powers down and the fan turns off, it would have filled the trap up. So that's definitely not good that the trap is dry, but there's something else going on here. I put a little bit of water in the drain pan and it's just sitting there and it's not draining. So we just have a slow drain. I think that the, the dry trap was uh, simply because it has a coupling right there and the water just drains out overnight out of the trap. Um, so this is plugged up right here. So we're gonna open it up and blow it out It's kind of hard to show you with the camera, but the evaporator is not too bad um, But it is dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it with some evap cleaner. I'm gonna use the Viper venom pack evaporator cleaner. I got over here And it's hard to get without making you guys go upside down and inside out and uh, The drain pan is clear too even on this side, normally uh, I've shown it in some videos where it gets really dirty on the back side. This one's rather clean, which must mean that I've cleaned this one somewhat recently because even this blower assembly, this blower wheel is really clean too. So I must have done some work on this a while back. I know I put a heat exchanger in it about a year or two ago. Maybe I did it then. I don't know. Anyways, but I'm going to go ahead and clean it with some evap cleaner. It's not super soiled, so it shouldn't take much. Um, I mentioned in one of my videos recently and I got some feedback about the Viper coil gun. Someone had said, all the coil guns are the same. It's the same as every other manufacturer. Mechanically, it is the same, okay? Mechanically, this gun is the same as you see with other people, but the concentration or the dilution ratios are different, okay? So basically, the little chingus up in here that pulls cleaner while the water's flowing through is different. So the Viper coil gun uses a lot less cleaner. So you're not gonna waste as much cleaner. So there is a difference, especially if you're using the Viper cleaners, okay? If you use their cleaners, trust me, you wanna use this because you'll get the full benefit of this Venom pack using the multiple nine gallons. I probably get six to eight gallons because I mix it a little bit rich. But if you use the other manufacturer's coil gun where you fill it up all the way and you can use it within two minutes, you're gonna see that I'm gonna pour the smallest amount of cleaner in here and it's actually gonna be too much and we're gonna use very little of it. Uh, that's about the minimum just because I wanna make sure that this goes all the way down, but we probably won't even use all that. It's, it's amazing. And the other thing too, I've said this a couple times and I just don't want people to get confused because I was a little confused when I first started using this is the, the lettering is different. So on the other manufacturer's gun, A is the most. On this one, A is the least. E is the most cleaner used. So we're gonna foam this guy up real quick. I'm running on the C setting, okay? And you're gonna see it foams rather well. So you actually have to be careful because it'll foam up so much that it'll overflow the drain pan. So you gotta be cautious about that. So make sure you have already saturated your coil, which I already did. And we're gonna spray some cleaner down in here. We'll just let it drain down in. Yeah, I gotta be careful. I'm getting it down into the ducts, but I'm gonna put the camera down so I can do this without getting it in the ducts. And then we'll spray from the other side too. The key to their cleaners is you have to let them sit longer than you would with the other manufacturer's cleaners, okay? You gotta let them sit and you gotta let them break up all that stuff. Again, you see all that foam, that's what I'm talking about. It'll start to overflow, which it is a little bit. So gotta be careful because, you know, they don't have customers in the building right now, so. 
but still you want to be very cautious. But you notice how much foam is in there and how much water is coming out because most of it's foam right now. So just let it sit and do its job and then rinse it. Technically this is a no rinse cleaner, but I like to rinse it just to see the dirt come off and everything. When I say no rinse cleaner, because it has condensation uh, dripping off the evaporator, it's self rinsing. But I also used it a little strong to get the real good foaming action going on. So I am rinsing it. Starting from the bottom, working my way up just a little bit at a time. It's not coming out bad at all, so that's good. The last thing I'm gonna do when I'm doing the cleaning process is I'm gonna use some sanitizer, and I've shown this before, but I've never shown the process of doing it. It's super easy. Um, this is their strike back cleaner, and I pre-filled this quart bottle with water and just do two full pumps. That's all you gotta do. Two full pumps, it's got plenty of sanitizer in it, and then we're just gonna spray it down on the unit, and you're not gonna rinse the sanitizer. Just like on an ice machine, this right here is just gonna sanitize all the surfaces that we've touched. Um, and they tell me that it's completely safe. I haven't had any problems with it. I've used it many times. It's not gonna hurt a single thing. All I'm gonna do is just spray this stuff all over the evaporator and all over the surfaces where my hands were touching and just let it self dry, self rinse, whatever. It's not gonna hurt anything. I mean, obviously don't spray it in electrical. Obviously that's dirty. I'm not gonna go crazy with this, but I'll spray it in here too on this side. Um, put it on the stream setting and get it back in there. You know, it's just like a cool thing to add to the invoice that when you were done, you sanitized everything. That's all. You know, and I mean, it's peace of mind too if you think about it. Then you know, you know, you've done all your part with the whole virus and all this stuff to try to prevent anything. Now, we're not saying this stuff eliminates the virus or anything like that, but um, we're just doing this just to be safe not making any crazy claims or anything like that. It didn't take much at all. I just split the condenser really quick. Didn't even have to pull the fan motor. Um, it's not horrendous, but it is dirty in there. So we're gonna give it a quick little rinse um, and then spray some cleaner on that. And then we'll gauge up and check out the unit. Again, I'm not just stopping and saying it was a plugged up drain. I'm making sure because it could be a slow drain and it could be a restriction in the metering device. Who knows? There's so many different things that could be going on here. So big picture as usual. Going to give it a pre-rinse. Just get some of the stuff out. We're not going crazy right now. Just getting the condenser wet. Getting some of the big chunks off. We'll rinse from the other side too. Some of that stuff off. Get on the inside. Same thing, and then we'll clean. And of course, we want to clean from the inside out, do it correctly, you know. But we're just gonna get the whole thing nice and wet. And uh, we'll come over here to this side, which I already opened this one up. It's like someone, I think I've talked about this unit before. This, someone's done a lot of creative stuff with pressure controls and put aftermarket ones and whatever. Condenser's not too bad. We're just gonna give it a quick rinse. I can actually see through it in some spots. So we'll still put some cleaner on there just to make sure we get any built up grime out of there. Same thing, we're gonna use the strike back condenser coil cleaner. It only takes a little bit, doesn't take much. Essentially, the cleaner I have to put in there is just enough for the chingus to reach the bottom of the cleaner and that's it. We won't even use it all. I'll end up pouring it back into the container when I'm done, but that'll do multiple ACs that little bit. This is highly concentrated stuff, so remember, this bag is gonna last you multiple, multiple cleanings. I would say the way I've been using it, just like the evaporator cleaner, I'll probably get about six cleanings out of, or six gallons out of this. So cleanings, it's gonna last a long time, but if you're doing like, I'm not doing all the ACs today because I just need to get the bars done, but if I was doing all of them, that bag would be more than enough, more, than, I'd, I'd probably only use if even half that bag to clean all these ACs. Bring it on there on the B setting. B is in boy. Just let it sit. You gotta let this stuff sit for five to 10 minutes. It's not like, I, again, I know I keep preaching this guys, but I swear this stuff is awesome. Um, it's not like the other brands that if you let it sit, it'll eat the condenser away. That's not the case with this one. So the key to this stuff is to let it sit. And remember that this stuff is all safe so you know it may take a couple different cleanings you may do need to do two cleanings but it's not corrosive it's not eating the roof away like it's just soap guys get from the other side too and just let it sit and do its magic
Look at how much cleaner is still left in there. Barely used any. So that's more than enough cleaner. We're just going to let it sit and then we'll rinse it. We're all clean. I didn't pay attention. It's frustrating. And uh, when I was hosing everything off, I didn't realize that someone has the capacitor dangling right there because I was soaking all of that back there. Frustrating. I don't like aftermarket crap. Grr. All right, well, I'm just gonna let it drip dry and hopefully it doesn't short out when I turn it on. I'm gonna start assembling it because I still got another 20 minutes putting the unit back together. So let's hope that nothing shorts out. Looks like it started up. I don't know why that happened. Had a call for cooling or something, but the indoor blower motor's running. We might have to jump it out. All right, our unit is up and running. And uh, measure quick. Yeah, we're running with a wet coil, so we gotta let this guy calm down. But look at that suction pressure, how low it's dropping. The saturation temperature's going down to 16 degrees. We doggy, that's really low. That's almost low, low pressure cutout time. We are running with a wet evap and a wet condenser though, so let's give it a few minutes to see if it stabilizes out. It's slowly starting to come up. So it's probably just that initial startup. We're gonna give it some time again to dry out the coils and let it operate. Um, outdoor air is 82, return air, supply air. Okay, cool, we're gonna let it run. While I'm waiting for that unit to stabilize out and dry off the coils, I'm rinsing all the other units. I'm not doing a full PM. I'm not splitting the other units right now because I don't see the need to. Well, no, I take that back. I do see the need to. These condensers all need to be split, but I'm on overtime right now. So I don't want to be here any longer than I have to. So I got that unit running like it should. Well, we're going to verify the pressures right now. But while I'm waiting for it to dry off, instead of just standing around, I'm doing something. So I'm just rinsing condensers real quick, clearing drains real quick, nothing crazy. I'm still gonna recommend full PM, but we're just you know keeping busy basically, not wasting their time or their money. Okay, so we got multiple things going on here. First off, um, according to Measure Quick, our head pressure's a little bit high, okay? Our superheat's a little bit on the low side. Subcoolings, eh, it's all right-ish. Um, it's a little bit on the high side. But our airflow is an interesting one. We've got a good temperature split. Our temp split's about 21 degrees. Let's see what we're supposed to have. Also, it's actually saying we should have about 17 degrees. Uh, it looks like we're low on the airflow. We're a six ton. So technically should have 2,400 CFMs. Um, total external static is right on the money. This unit has a maximum static pressure of one inch. Um, and if we click on that, does it tell us the... No, it doesn't tell us what we're actually reading. We have to go into the tool manager. If we go into the tool manager, return air static pressure is at 0.62, supply air is at 0.36. It's always possible. I think we got multiple things leading to an issue here. Um, let's see what Measure Quick has to say about it. I'm thinking some airflow issues and maybe an overcharge. So it says dirty condenser, non condensables. We know it's not a dirty condenser 100%. I don't think it's non-condensables. Um, airflow is low. And 
then system may be overcharged with refrigerant slightly because the superheat is moving so that's why it just went away and then came back it's not horrendous though the unit's in decent shape there's not a whole lot i'm going to do today sometimes on these units on these carrier units they'll uh they'll have plugged up metering device restricted metering devices you can usually see it though and I don't see any frost pattern on the, the, the little accurator metering devices. But that subcooling's a hair on the high side for my comfort. Um, which makes me wonder if someone added gas to this. I know I've worked on this unit before. I can't remember what I the conclusion I came to last time I worked on it. And I've got so many videos, it's hard to go back and review it all. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check out the motor pulley and see if we have any room to speed it up. Um, looking at the static pressure, I mean, we could have a dirty return air filter, or return air grill. We're currently running no filters right now. So we could have a dirty return air grill. It's very difficult, very high in the air to get to theirs. Um, hmm. Let me look at the pulley and see where we're at with the motor. See if we can speed it up at all. But that's going to increase our static pressure and we're already almost at the limit. It makes me wonder, I can actually probably prove a dirty air filter, a dirty return air grill by opening up the economizer damper. The economizer's not hooked up on this guy. So if I manually open it and our temp split drops, our airflow goes up and our static pressure goes down, we might prove that we have a plugged up return. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to adjust that motor pulley real quick. Okay, the economizer motor has been disconnected. You can see people got wires cut and all kinds of crap. So what I did was loosen up the screws and then I can open and close the dampers and then I can tighten the screws down. So. We're gonna go something like that. We're gonna pull a bunch of outside air and see if that helps our TD and helps our airflow. And if it does, it's gonna prove the whole dirty return. Um, interesting though, with the dirty return, you would expect to have a lower than normal suction pressure. Hmm, that's an interesting one. I don't know. Okay, well, let's see what this does. This thing is a mess. It's working. It's working about as good as it can. There's a couple things I'd like to do. I don't know if they're gonna prove it though. Um, I got our superheat up a little bit. I ended up removing some refrigerant from the system, just a little bit. My airflow though is not improving. Um, Subcooling still eh, a little bit higher, but we're looking at superheat on this one. Um, my discharge temperature or uh, saturation temperature is a little too high for my liking right now. My temperature split is okay. It's about 21 degrees. It's a little bit on the high side. Uh, airflow, I mean, I got it up a little bit, but not much. Um, static pressure isn't really changing too much by opening up the outside air damper. It's kind of went up a little bit, to be honest with you. So, what I'd like to do is a couple things. I've, I've run into this problem here before. I'm going to do some research. Uh, we're probably going to leave this one alone, but I'm going to do some research. I want to know if the right compressor is in this unit because it has been replaced and the previous company I've seen them put bigger compressors in these things and that just throws everything off. The next thing is I want to make sure that it's the right condenser fan motor. Um, I want to make sure that we're not supposed to have like an 800 CFM condenser fan motor. Um, although no, that would raise my head pressure up even higher. So no, I don't think a condenser fan motor is the problem. Uh, the next thing I would like to do is talk to the customer about coming in here and let me go ahead and recover the charge out of this unit, change the dryer, pull a vacuum, and start from scratch. Put fresh R22 in there, weigh it in, because I don't know what's been done to this. Um, there's different pressure controls. There's an aftermarket fan motor, an aftermarket compressor. Uh, I don't know what the deal is. It doesn't, it might have a slight restriction in the metering device, but I don't know, man right there but anyways they are operating the water leak is solved the unit is doing as good as it can be I did get the superheat up so we're not flooding back to the compressor as bad anymore so we're gonna tell them to keep an eye on it and we'll make a few suggestions I just don't like that discharge pressure that's a little high for my liking um, but yeah we know the condensers clean we know there's nothing wrong with that so that's it uh, I don't know if they're gonna continue with anything else on this unit I definitely know that we're gonna to have to come back and put air filters in every one of these units because I pulled all the air filters out for now. So we'll see what they wanna do. All right, so the repairs, they're not always perfect, right? In this situation, this video was shot a while back. I've had this one sitting in my archive and I just hadn't edited it yet. Um, this was shot back in June. 
clearly this was coming out of the first lockdown in Southern California, okay? Uh, the restaurants were just kind of, we were still in lockdown, but they were starting to get ready to be opened back up again. And then obviously it shut back down again, because now we're in August and they're still shut down. But anyways, uh, we weren't getting a lot of air conditioning calls, but situations like this, the customer would call me out for a water leak and then I'd find everything was smashed. You guys saw how dirty the filters were. They hadn't been changed since January plugged up drains, plugged up condensers, dirty evaporators. We're still cleaning up the messes from that first lockdown and we're in August right now, okay? Now, when it comes to the repair being made, um, you know, we can't always get the big picture repair approved. In this situation, the customer chose not to go with the repair. Um, they were happy with the unit. It's working as good as it could right, you know, without making any major changes. And they still aren't seating people in the bar area. So they really don't want to spend the money to upgrade that unit. Now I did inform them, Hey, you know, this is going to cause compressor failure. You're going to have issues. And they realize that, but because it's operating, they just want to leave it be. And I'm not mad at them for that. Okay. Just because I give them a big picture diagnosis does not necessarily mean they're always going to go for the big picture repair. In this situation, what I quoted to them was to go ahead and let me recover the charge. And I went ahead and told them, hey, more than likely this unit is going to have a plugged up metering device. It's a fixed orifice restrictor. It has like seven or eight different uh, inlets into the evaporator coil. I kind of said, you know, more than likely it's going to be that. This is going to be the cost to repair it. Um, and then I wanted to put in the OEM condenser fan motor. And then I also wanted to get up and clean the return grill, actually inspect the return grill. And then I told them potentially we needed to clean it too. Um, and they just kind of said, you know what, not right now because they don't have the money. Okay. And it is what it is, guys. We got to just be thankful for the work that at least I am. I'm thankful for the little bit of work that I'm getting from these restaurants as it is. Okay. And I'm thankful, cross my fingers that they continue to pay their bills. Okay. Now, uh, about the, the Viper cleaner. So I was using the Viper condenser coil cleaner, the Venom pack. I was also using the Viper evaporator coil cleaner, the Venom pack. And then I also showed the strike back sanitizer. I've been really using that strike back sanitizer a lot and just kind of for my customer's peace of mind. And in all honesty, I'm not even charging my customer for the sanitizer. It's just kind of a courtesy thing that I do as I'm leaving the unit couple squirts in the area that I was working just to make sure that we have um, all the areas that we were working on clean and sanitized. I'm not making any false claims, even though that sanitizer does kill certain things. Okay. I'm not even claiming that to the customer because I don't even want to tread on that. I don't want to start going down that path. I'm not making any claims to the customer. All I'm telling them is that I sanitized all the surfaces that I had access to that I was working on to make sure that I'm potentially not bringing in any extra bacteria, viruses, or anything to the best of my ability, okay? But I, again, I am not making any false claims trying to say that this kills everything, okay? Even though I do know that it does kill some stuff, I'm just not even going down that path, okay? Um, anyways, as far as the refrigeration technologies products, you guys can get those at your local supply house. I highly suggest you guys ask local, see if they have it. Now, in my case, a lot of the supply houses do not carry it local, okay? And a lot of the times I end up having to get it from True Tech Tools. Now, some of my supply houses carry some of it and I can have it ordered in, but um, when, if you guys can't yourselves, then I highly suggest you guys check out truetechtools.com. They're an online website, great people over there. They have great customer service, lots of great products. I actually buy a lot of tools from them. Um, if you guys check them out and you like their pricing, do me a favor and use my offer code big picture, one word, big picture. Okay. Um, you'll save 8% on your order and I get a small commission from that helps to support the channel. Okay. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys watching this video. Leave me some feedback. Let me know what you think was going on in the system. Do you think my diagnosis of a potential restriction was correct? Um, I'm always looking for feedback. Um, you know, sometimes you guys give me ideas and it's like, Hey, I never thought about that. Okay. So I, I'm, I really do love to read those comments. So do me a favor, leave me some comments, send me an email. Um, remember Monday evenings, 5 PM Pacific time on YouTube, I go live and I usually talk about these videos, answer the comments, answer the emails. So let's, uh, or hopefully you guys can make it and check that out. Okay. I really, really appreciate you guys and we will catch you on the next one.